of the most iconic voices in golf are back to save the day and ready to entertain in their newly weekly video podcast, Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Welcome back to another episode of Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Mike Abram, producer and co-host here with you. Peter and Gary are going to join me in a second. We've got a great episode for you today. We're going to talk about true, not true, believe it or not, what's going on in the world of golf. No longer are these emergency episodes. It seems like the new normal, but we're going to make some sense out of everything that's going on. We'd like to give big thanks to our sponsors, Foresight Sports and their incredible Quad Pro, the number one used launch monitor on the PGA Tour. Some of their other great launch monitors, of course, their simulators and sim in the box. Peter uses a simulator with a lot of his students at his home. They're fantastic. Thanks also to Bono's Barbecue. Bono's Barbecue, great barbecue sauces, great barbecue takeout and eat in. Lab Golf is changing the face of putting on all the major tours throughout the world, and they really help amateurs as well. Go to labgolf.com to find out more. Today, let's get right to it. Let's get to a little Believe It or Not with Peter and Gary right here on Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Let's kick off Believe It or Not, Gary. Uh, I, I think first. I think, I think Sasquatch is real. I know so I'm you I'm going to throw do. that right out there just to start this whole thing off. All right, what's the next Do we one? have any comment on Sasquatch? I, no, I, I let's took, not go I, there. I, I, took, I took the under on when Sasquatch would get mentioned. Yeah. Okay. So I win. How did I do? Oh, you good, did good. good. Four seconds? Yeah, under four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk maybe first about this whole SSG, the investment that they've made into the PGA Tour, what they're going to demand for it. Well, is the SSG and the PGA Tour going to jettison their relationship with the DP World Tour, formerly the European Tour. Wow, a lot of acronyms. Yeah. SSG. They own what? They own baseball franchises. They own football franchises. They own soccer franchises. Yes, sir. They are the boys. So these guys are coming into the tour for profit. Interesting, because we are a non-profit. So they're going to come in, and they're going to sit on the board, and they're going to direct the tour for their for-profit entity mm. now that they're going to have which we can get into because there's some other stuff coming up. Yep. Um, so I think it's going to be very interesting. They've already just formed a board. They put 13 yep. guys on the board, correct? Correct, 13. That should get a lot of stuff done with 13 guys this on the, the board. This is the PGA Tour this Enterprise, is, yeah. the for-profit. Yep. That, that should be interesting. Um, and uh, and away they go. I, I, I don't know. I literally don't know for-profit where that's coming, unless they're one of some more T-shirts. I, I, I don't know where that's coming from, unless another rumor we've heard, believe it or not, is that the tour is going to lose its 501c6, which is their tax exempt situation, yeah. like baseball did and football did. And they are then going to go to basic owning franchises. So all the tournaments, like here in Scottsdale, that will be owned by somebody. You buy it, you build equity in it. And you go from there. Well, first things first. <clears throat> SSG is not in this because they are benevolent to the game of golf. They are going to make money. They put a, a billion and a half dollars into this deal with another potential billion and a half dollars uh, available yep. if things turn out yep. positive for them, right? right? So what do people do when they make an investment? What do these business people do? They cut the fat. Yep. They, they reduce expenses, yep. right? And then they figure out how to how to create a product. Um, I don't want to say as cheaply as possible, but let's just say that they're not going to excessively spend on the product. So what we've got left now, SSG definitely wants to dump the DP World Tour. Yes. That's, that's a given. Yes. They figure that's dead wood. It's not going to help anything. So I look for the the... PGA Tour to work out a deal with DP World Tour, and they're going to be gone. Now, that opens up a whole nother can of worms with Liv Believe it and, and the DP World Tour, but yeah. we'll, we'll leave that for a second. The next thing, you got the Champions Tour, and, and, and you've got the Corn Ferry Tour. You've got a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be have a big question mark put over their target because... Money. Money. I, I think that senior tour, I saw somewhere, it cost a tour about $13 million a yep. year to operate that. I'm oh. pretty sure 
if SSG got involved with that and look at that and go, well, they're look, they Are look at ratings, this? you're looking at sales for advertising and so forth and so on. And, and then we go on another one, I just forgot another one. Well, I'm hearing a lot of stuff that NBC wants out so bad they can't stand it. And they're mm. going to sell the Golf Channel to Netflix or Apple. And so basically you wouldn't have any place to put these things on. So yeah, believe it or not, it gets, is, is someone like the PGA Tour or perhaps Liv going to buy the Golf Channel from NBC Universal? I would assume, I would assume, I'm looking at three, Amazon, yeah. Netflix, yeah. and probably Apple. Makes sense. You can't and discount, three... you cannot discount live in that equation. No, you can't. No, you can't. Because they want to go worldwide and, and they would they would take the golf channel and they would they would merge it in with Sky Sports or whomever and they would they would develop a worldwide network. Now they may do it on their own, who knows? But they you... can't we can't there cannot be an equation where we are not coming back together, all the golfers as one. It, we don't. Just how the product, heck is it going to happen? Our product is so bad right now. So bad for television. It is really, really bad. Yeah. Tiger's gone, basically, and we're sitting here with this group of guys, and a lot of them went to that group of guys. These guys are not playing against each other. I'm trying to do my <laughs> Italian thing here. And, they're, and they've got, we've got to get this thing back together again where these guys are playing how do you, together. How do you see that happening? Here's how I see it happening. I, I see it like a pyramid let's let's just say what you said first they all of a sudden go and they buy the dp tour okay live yeah oh geez. Yeah. now they got these tournaments i'm guessing 25 25 tournaments were world ranking points yes they're <coughs> legit they get world ranking points so i'd like to take if if we have got animosity like the Ryder cup yeah we have really got animosity and live against the pga tour no doubt so why don't we 10 times a year have these two sides play each other in the effect that if Liv gets her world ranking points, that means everybody, there's seven people now that get to vote for world ranking points, seven tours, basically. Right. You put them all together, everybody gets world ranking points. in. Ten times a year, if you get in the top 75 of the world ranking points, it's called the Galaxy Tour. And they play all <laughs> over the world. Did did the you top trademark for that name? 30 yet? million. No, I'm okay. just throwing this stuff out. If you yeah. like it, copyright it. Uh, rumors. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. The rumors, Galaxy rumors. Tour. Okay. Now you go in. <laughs> Believe it or not. They play 10. And then you go and play the four majors if you're eligible. That's 14. And then you go back to your different tours and you play like hell to keep your ranking points 75 up to get in these 10 tournaments. <clears throat> the value of that production for media, what we were talking yeah. about, Apple. Netflix um, um, and um, um, what was the other one I had? Amazon. Amazon. Oh, cool. are you kidding? The best in the world and actually hate each other? That'd God, be good. I like that. Just leave, let's use it. Peter, on that vein, believe it or not, the reason Liv has stopped fighting for one for ranking points, world ranking points, is because they know this is going to happen and they're going to take over the DP World Tour. Well, if you connect the dots. If if Liv acquires DP World Tour, like Gary said, they're going to get world ranking points. The players on Liv will be able to play on on the European Tour, DP World Tour, whatever you want to call it. It won't be DP. It'll be Liv World Tour. Yep. <clears throat> um, Aramco. And then <clears throat> now you've got two tours on equal footing, at least at this point, and they will be fighting each other. That's huge. Because that, that creates Huge. the animosity, that creates the, the sizzle that people are going to want to tune in to see. You know, you, you could have, like Gary said, 10, 10 events uh, where they compete against each other, the top 50 from each tour play. You could develop different formats over 10 tournaments. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. That's how you unite this whole thing. If they acquire the DP World Tour, they acquire the Ryder Cup. Oh, now the Ryder Cup becomes very interesting mm -hmm. because it, it, can, it can transform itself from just Europe to U.S. against the world. Adios to the President's Cup. Ah, we own the President's Cup. <laughs> Adios. Ah, that's God. money. That's I not, don't know not, about that. That's Let's not think money. About that, that that's a lost leader. Let's right? think about it. It's another one that SSG might want to cut anyway. So Ryder Cup becomes 
again, the two tours. But the European tour is changed. It's not the European tour anymore. It's the world tour. It, yeah, it right? becomes the world tour. So yeah. now, now we got something. Yeah. Right? I mean, it, it would, you know, when you look at this, everybody's fighting to get to this top 70, 75. I don't know what the number is, 75. And you're playing for 10 times for 30 million. Okay? Now you've got, now these guys are going to go back and they're going to play their different tours because the only way to do it is world ranking points. So everybody's getting world ranking points. So you got to play your ass off to get to that 75 because you get to that crest and you're playing those 10 events plus the majors. Man, that's some, that's some very good competition that you would want to watch. On the same theme, Paul Azinger posed this. We'll use this as a believe it or not. Paul Azinger says, it's so sad because now the PGA Tour is becoming a feeder tour for Liv. Believe it or not, Peter. Uh, it's not quite a feeder tour yet, mm -hmm. but obviously the next big rumor, the next big believe it or not, is... Amongst the inside people, whatever the hell that means, if Rory were to be victorious in Augusta in a couple of weeks, yeah. then the word on the street is he's gone to live. They have Ooh. offered him a gigantic deal. He's got his four majors. He's got his grand slam. And adios. And especially after watching uh, Full Swing and you see how, how he got basically shafted in this whole land. thing, he was yeah. he, he was out there. He was the mouthpiece. He 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 hurt his career. He hurt his golf game by by standing. And then all of a sudden, right behind him, somebody comes up and sticks a knife in his back and says, "No, we're going to do this now." And and so th there's got to be some resentment financially right now. Thinking this through, if you're going to do it, and what we're saying, believe it or not, could <laughs> actually be true. What a time to leave to go to live. <laughs> because if this does come to fruition, Rory leaves and gets his, let's say, 800 million, okay? Then all of a sudden they go, well, we're going to play. We're going to do this thing where they play 10 times a year. Now all of a sudden he's got the best. He's got all that money, and he still now has a, a availability to keep his status in the world because he's going to go play the DP tour. And he's European. And he's, well, European. Nothing anyway. he's, he's on the U.S. tour because that's the, that's the biggest, baddest tour right now. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily going to be singularly the biggest baddest yeah. tour any yeah. longer and he's european he goes back to the european tour and you know it's a place around the world it's a financial move in in chess but if they're going to do that then uh king to rook three i don't know anything about that. <laughs> i mean there's rook so three, there's so many the things that four. i don't either i don't either th there's so many things that have happened now, i mean with this latest ssg acquisition mer merger whatever you want to call it yeah. with the pga tour yeah. so does that happen Word on the street was Yasser said, okay, you can do that. It's John Rahm times 10. I think we mentioned that in the last podcast, did, yeah. which means he's going to open up the checkbook. He's going to try and go after more players. Right? I don't, you know, more. What's more? What, what do you need? Who moves the needle? If you, if you were that side, who moves the needle? Rory's obviously number he's one. He's the only one. Yeah. There's nobody else. And Rory hadn't won in 10 years. He hadn't won a major in 10 years. <laughs> He's on the downslope, space on the down. All these guys, the best thing we got is these new kids coming out that are, where are these guys coming from? All these rookies winning. Um, put your investment and go do, that's why I like Netflix, second swing. or Full swing. Full, second season. full swing, yeah. second season. I'll get it right. You got it. <laughs> Close. Because they're at least identifying some product. You know, with Jake Knapp and these kids coming out, identifying, they're over here. Go. These other guys right now, we have depleting assets. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. And and <clears throat> the the common mentality about players who went to live was it's an exhibition tour. They're, they're getting guaranteed money. They're going to give up working on their game. Their game's going to suffer. They're not going to play as well. Um, all of that stuff, right? That may or may not prove to be true. I, I don't think it does. Mm -hmm. But look at the U.S. tour now. Look at Rory. Look at Scotty Scheffler. Look at the big names. Mm -hmm. Have they won anything? Mm -mm. No. And I, and I tell you right now, they are diminished in terms of their competitive spirit, in my opinion. Yeah, they are. Because they're yep. not playing against John Robb. Yep. And they're not playing against Dustin Johnson. Yeah. And so they're the ones now that are suffering because now, now they're just going to play because they have to. 
and, and it's not it's not right. representative. Even these signature events. They're, they're not. There's not as much excitement. We've got Arnold Palmer going on right now. Of course, we're all looking forward to the Masters. We're looking forward to everybody coming together. Uh, Joaquin Neiman probably playing the best <laughs> golf of anyone in the world right now. He's playing pretty good. great one, on one live, winning a couple times. And, and Rom's playing pretty well there, too. And we know Scheffler, if he could figure out the putter, maybe he starts playing good. You saw in full swing in the second season how the air kind of got let out of the balloon of the PGA Tours balloon when Kepka won at the PGA Championship last year. That kind of changed, it seemed like that was the big momentum shift in getting something done. But then to hear again how um, Jay Monahan explained merger, everything was merger, 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 and then it was like, oh, no merger. You can see why the powers that be at Liv aren't happy. They got a deal done with SSG, but it's just been sitting out there with Liv. So believe it or not, there will be a deal done between the PG a tour and live by the end of 2024. Well, they're supposed to have it done by Masters. That, yeah, that was they, their, they, they that, that's, that ain't gonna happen, yeah. right? It, it, bottom line, bottom line, this whole thing, the players have to come together, okay? Now, if it's like we were talking about 10 times and then they go back and they play their tour, which then could be the DP tour, they go back and play theirs, we play ours, everybody goes like that, okay, fine. But in that, or, there's one tour and everybody gets back in together and then we do it all together. But we can't, we can't fractionalize what we've got because we haven't got enough, yeah. right? Right. We haven't got enough. No. The, Tiger's gone. The, so we, but we got to, where's our, where's our talent pool? Well, they're splitting it. You can't do that because they've already pissed off every sponsor there is in uh, the PGA Tour with what they did. Let's go over that for a second. Yeah, but see, I, Gary, I don't, I, I do not see any way right now that all of these players who've got one, one of them, one group of them turned right, one group turned left. I don't see any way that they come back under one umbrella and compete. I, I just don't see that. I, I see the future of golf exactly what you said, which was we're going to have this entity over here that live owns. That's, that that, that consumes the European do. tour. They do they do their thing. We got this thing over here that SSG and the PGA Tour owns. They can franchise tournaments. They can do whatever the hell they want. And then we get these two tours mm -hmm. coming together mm -hmm. X times a year mm -hmm. to compete against each other mm -hmm. around the world, in the States, in Europe, wherever. I don't care where. Yep. And then now you've got interest on both sides. People are going to look at the European tour and, and, the, and call it the world tour. And they're going to go, hmm, OK, they got some good players. Yep. Same thing with the PGA Tour. We'll develop new players. We'll, we'll, we'll get some personalities, hopefully, because yep. right now all we have is you can, you can create them. Yeah, create them. right. And then so we have to take this conflict and we have to use the conflict to create excitement because there's no excitement coming from the PGA Tour right I, now. I, I, I agree. No. I agree 100%. I'm just, my, my question would be at that point, do you take, do you take Liv and put Yasser, His Excellency, on the board? which it shows a merger and they can do their for profit. Of the, of the, the European side? Of the European side yeah. on our board. And we all run this together, but they run their tour like they're doing now. Team events, they play, they're playing 14 events, I think, worldwide. Yeah. yeah. And But there has to be some cohesion, the fact that we have to get together or do you, do you create the animosity and Give them the Heisman and say, no, we, uh, you guys go do your deal over there. We'll do ours. I, I think, we already got our money. I think the, the, that live slash European slash world tour needs to become a reality first. Yes. And then at that point, Everything SSG, they're not stupid, right. right? Arthur Blank owns the Falcons, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and John Henry... God bless him, is running the Red Sox into the ground, but that's another, <laughs> another story. Uh, believe it Sorry, poor, so, poor Red Sox so, fan here. Yeah. So uh, these guys aren't stupid. Yeah. And they're going to figure out a way to, 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 for the hierarchy to meet somewhere and decide, all right, now we're going to do this. We're going to have, we're gonna have um, a 10, 12 tournament schedule. There'll be some team events. There'll be some individual events. There'll be match play events yeah. and whatever. But but we're going to get these two conflicting entities and use that to conflict. This is the Ryder Cup. Yes. From 40 yeah. years ago yeah. on steroids. Yeah. Because it the European be. Tour players never came over and played the the, the U.S. Tour mm -hmm. other than majors, and and that that's what fueled them to get better, right? Yeah. No Not as friendly. So, it's 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 friendly. It's more collegial now. 
that they're all playing on both tours. But believe it or not, golf fans just want to see the best players playing against each other. They could right. give a crap what the tour is called. So you in, agree? instead of getting it four times a year, now you're going to get it, okay, let's, let's say it's 10 or 12, 14, plus the majors. Yeah. You're going to get it 14 or 16 times. Fantastic. Right? Sign and me up. That's it. Right? And then, and then you can develop your own fans for the waste management, you know, or the whatevers. And, and same with the European tour. It's, it's, it's not that complicated if somebody has the big picture as a goal. But right now, there's nobody that I see with the big picture at goal. You yeah. Know? It's not. If you like Believe It or Not, leave it in the comments below. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to have a little Coach Costas tip to help your game. This is Costas and McCourt off their rockers. We will be right back. Imagine a putter that will actually transform your game. Introducing Lab Golf Putters. The revealer shows how the lab keeps the putter face square through impact unlike any other putter. Lab is the hottest putter in professional golf with multiple global victories in 2023, including the PGA Tour. Lab breaks the mold with better science so you can stop struggling with your putting. Elevate your game, simplify your putting, and untorque yourself. Visit labgolf.com to discover how lab putters are remaking the game. Bono's Pit Barbecue, an authentic Southern Pit Barbecue experience you won't forget. At Bono's, you'll find a genuine down-home pit barbecue experience, the whole experience. Our entire menu is smoked and prepared in-house from our mouth-watering smoked meats to our delicious sides made from scratch. Our smoker is always smoking and everything to order, no shortcuts. With 20 locations across the country, from the sunshine state of Florida to the Rocky Mountains, Bono's culture is unmistakable at each of our restaurants. We offer incredible opportunities for franchisees. To find out more, visit our website, bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. And remember, if you don't have a pit, it ain't legit. Visit our website, costasmccord.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast and follow us on social media at Costas McCord Off Their Rockers. Now it's time for Coach Costas. Peter gives us some great tips to help our games. One of the things tour players practice an enormous amount on is controlling the distance with their wedges. And that's one thing I see amateurs not spending hardly any time on. This is why I use my Foresight Quad Pro all the time. I actually use it when I'm practicing just so that I get an understanding of how far each club I've hit went. Because sometimes, especially I use it with my amateurs, they think that if they put more effort in, they're going to get more distance out. And when I get them to relax and get the right sense of effort, they actually see on the quad that the distance increased. Now they thought they tried less hard, therefore it should have gone shorter, but that's not the case. Now in terms of wedge control, there's a bunch of different ways you can control how far the, the, the ball goes. You can control it with 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever your mind is setting on with your arm, now, not the club head, but just your arm. You can go back, all of them to 9 o'clock and just change the rotation speed coming forward. It's up to you. There's a multitude of ways of controlling your yardages, but you have to have feedback. So that's why I use the quad. I will go back to nine o'clock on this swing. Now it's not important that you're precisely at nine. It's nine o'clock for you up here, right? Could be a little more, a little less, it's all right. It's, it's your perception of nine o'clock. So for nine o'clock, I carried that ball 60 yards. Eight o'clock. Tells me I carried it 40 yards. Now I'm going to go back to 10 o'clock. Seventy yards. So when you practice, you'll get a sense of arm swing going back to distance of the ball going forward without nuking it, without trying to decelerate to not go too far. I just see so many golfers 
who don't have the ability to match the length of the backswing to the length of the shot they want to hit. Now this is with my 58 degree lob wedge. I got to go through this process with my gap wedge, with my pitching wedge, even nine irons and eight irons when I want to make half or three quarter swings. You have to know how much backswing creates how much distance with every club in your bag. That's why I use the Quad Pro. It gives me accurate feedback and it gives me confidence. We want to thank you again for watching Costas and McCourt off their rockers. Hope you enjoyed this episode, our new segment, Believe It or Not. A lot of great information from Peter and Gary. And, and thanks again for subscribing, liking, commenting below if you have any questions or want to hear us talk about anything different. And remember, to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode of Costa McCourt Off Their Rockers. Thanks again to our great sponsors, Foresight Sports and their incredible launch monitors and simulators, Bono's Barbecue and their great barbecue sauces and meats, and of course, Lab Golf and the Lab Golf Putter and their cutting edge putters at Lab Golf. Go to labgolf.com for more. We'll be back with another episode very soon, right here on Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you real soon.